everything else, your soul is not you. It's part of you. It's part of you. But it's not the real you. Amen. So to gain access into all that the work of the Lord Jesus Christ provided for us, you must know the real you. And relate to the real you. Live your life based on this real you. Otherwise, you wouldn't have access to what has been made available to you. You'll be struggling like everybody else. Why? Because other people are trying to get God to do something. To get God to see them the way they see themselves. But that's impossible. God's not going to do it. For God to start seeing you the way you see yourself is for him to say that what Jesus did was no longer valid. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, yeah, I want God to see me through my trouble. I want God to see me through what I'm going through. He's not. For him to do that would be to believe that Jesus didn't do the job. Because when Jesus hung on that tree, when he was done, he said he was finished. You see, the cross was the end of struggle. The cross brought an end to the old you. Amen. Well, some say, yeah, Jesus paid for my sin. Well, if he paid for your sin, he also paid for all the consequences that came with it. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's why it's important that you know yourself the way God knows you. That you know the you in Christ. The you in Christ is the one that God recognizes. Somebody say, well, I'm this, I'm that, you know, I'm this, I'm that, I'm educated, I do this, I do that. In the kingdom of God, it means nothing if you're not in Christ. Amen. Amen. Very important. You see, the foundation for a successful Christian life is in understanding who you have been made in Christ. Understanding that, knowing that. I said, knowing that, understanding the position that you now hold because of the redemptive work of Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, this is the basis for God's dealings with men. That's the basis. The fact that you are a new creation, that's the basis for God's dealings with you. He's not dealing with you because, you know, uh, uh, you are from this side of town or you were born on this side of the track or you're black or you're white or you're red. The basis for God dealing with man is based on the fact that he made you a new creation. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. No link to the past. Hallelujah. But the struggle for many is they have failed to understand that they are spirit beings. And because they don't understand that, they judge all of their life's experience based on their soul, their will, their mind, and their emotions. I feel this. I feel unworthy. I feel like I'm not saved. I feel like I'm not the righteousness of God. I feel. I feel. To God, feelings mean nothing. Amen. You weren't saved by feelings. You were not saved by feelings. Amen. You can't go before God and say, you can't go, okay, well, let me feel my way through God. No. No. It's not a feeling. That's part of your soul. That was not what was saved. What was saved was you, the real you, your spirit man. Amen. That's what you must know. So whenever God calls you the righteousness of God, he's referring to the real you. Amen. And whenever he says that Jesus became poor so that him through your poverty, might, through his poverty, you might be rich. He's referring to your spirit man, the real you. 
Amen. And whenever he said that by the stripes of Jesus, ye were healed, he's referring to the real you, your spirit man. So what you need to do then is to allow the real you to govern the rest of your affairs so that you can see the greatness of what God has done in your life. Amen. Very important. You see, this new life that you have inside of you demands that you reprogram your world with these new life ideals. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. How about Romans chapter 12? Let's go to Romans chapter 12 in verse 1. I know you've heard all of this. I'm just here to water what your pastors have been preaching. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Romans 12 verses 1 and 2. It's a familiar scripture. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Who, who will present this? Who will, pre who will present this? You, right? That's what it says. That you present. Say, I. I. That's what it's talking about. You see, God saved your spirit, man, but you have to do something with your soul. You have to bring them back into experience of what God did. See, that's where, again, that's where many people fall into the traps of the enemy. They're waiting to feel good. They're waiting for, for everything to feel right. But it, that will never happen. Because Satan is still the God of this world, you know, the little G God of this world. He manipulates things to keep you feeling certain way. And so long as you keep feeling a certain way, you won't access what's already yours. You didn't get what's yours by feeling. God made you that way. So what he's instructing us to do is train our feeling according to who we are. But if you don't know who you are, how are you going to train your feelings? Amen. If you don't know who you are, how are you going to train your feeling? Very important. So in uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Aren't you brethren and sisters? Praise God. Amen. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. In other words, to, work, to the world system, to the world's ways of doing things. Do not conform, but be ye transformed, transformed. It goes by the renewing of your mind. In so many Christian circles, they read that, and what they read was by the removing of your mind. It didn't say removing of your mind. It's a renew it. You know, I mean, you'd be amazed to find some Christians that I'm not thinking on anything. Mm, I'm not thinking on anything. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says change what you think to match who you have been made. Amen. Instead of letting the outside describe you, you let your inside describe your outside. Amen. That's the key to a successful, to a victorious Christian living. Letting your inside dominate your outside. Amen. Very important. So be not, be not conformed, by, uh, do not conform to this world, but be ye transformed by the, renewing, by the renewing of your mind. And it goes on to tell us why. That you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Wouldn't we be correct to say that you may prove what God's intention for your life is? That you may prove what God's intention for you really is. That you may prove Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through 28 accurate. You know, remember, he created us in his image and his likeness and he said, let us have dominion. Hallelujah. Amen. 
You can do that without changing how you think. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. You know, victory for every situation in your life is tied to your identity. It's tied to who God has made you in Christ. That's the only thing it's tied to. It's not tied to how much more money you can make. It's not tied to what kind of job you have. It's not tied to any other education you can obtain. We should be educated, thank God. We should have access to wealth, thank God. But victory in life, according to the word of God, is not tied to anything else but your identity. You want to find out? Let's go. go let's go to First John, 1 John chapter 5. Glory to God. 1 John chapter 5. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 1 John 5, we will read verse 4. Verses 4 and 5. Are you ready? Let's say, let's read it. It says, for whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Huh? Huh? Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. In case you didn't get it, look at verse 5. And he goes on to ask the question, who is he that overcomes the world? He goes on to say, but he that believes that Jesus is the son of God. So he that believes that Jesus is the son of God, the Bible says, is born again. Okay? So he that believes that Jesus is the son of God is made a new creation. So this is the victory that overcomes the world, even the new creation. Amen. This is the victory that overcomes the world. I put it to you this way. Even our identity in Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Your faith is your identity. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Your faith is your identity. You know there are certain buildings that you can come into without a proper identification. Right. Yeah. Amen. Like, you know, thank God for the United States of America. I mean, you, I, I fly in, they ask for your IDs. You have to present your ID in order to come through. And if you're like us, thank God we have global entry. Praise God. Amen. It expedites your, your hanging around the line and stuff. So I see a whole lot of people in lines and I just, it's my ID. Come on. Amen. Amen. You see, your identity in Christ is your victory. That's what makes you an overcomer. Not your efforts, not your looks, not your education, nothing to do with feelings. It's just taking that identification. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even your identity. You see, your faith is your identity because your faith identifies you with Christ. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Your faith identifies you with Christ. It makes you one with him. It makes you one with his victory. It makes you one with his power. It makes you one with his anointing. Amen. So who is he that overcomes the world? He who believes that Jesus is Lord. Are you a believer? Amen. Bible says that is the basis for you being an overcomer. Wow, wow, wow. In other words, who is he that overcomes the world? That overcomes the world? He whose identity has been changed as a result of his confession of the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Whenever, oh glory to God, don't get me started, praise God. Bible said that we were translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Amen. You were translated. Translated. You are no longer where you used to be. 
Yeah. You see, but you know, notice when you made Jesus Lord, you were still walked on the same carpet you walked on. Right, right. You still walked through the same room you walked on. So it must not be this physical outlook that is referring to that changed. What changed was the real man, the man on the inside. Right. Amen. Amen. And our assignment in life is for us to start knowing ourselves after that new man, the man on the inside. Instead of letting what we feel, what we see, describe us, we let that inward man describe us. If you could see the greatness of what God made you on the inside, depression days are gone forever. Defeat erased. Amen. But so many people are, are still trying to know themselves. Well, you know, I'm this. I'm that. I'm there. That's all you hear. I feel this way. I feel this way. Well, why don't you just believe this way? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why is it then, you remember, the Bible said that we have been made one with God. Okay? We're restored. We're the new creation. Mm? Ah, because of time, my word. Uh, let me give you a few things of how God describes this you. And then we can come back to some other things. Praise God. Hallelujah. When I say knowing who you are, so, so let's give you a little bit of description about this you we're talking about. Okay? Would you agree? Are you on board? It's going to be good. Amen. <laughs> Bible calls you the righteousness of God. Well, Reverend, you don't know what I did. You, didn't, you don't know where I come from. Not based on what you did, but it's based on what Jesus did. He was made to be seen for us. That we might be made, made, made. You were made, made. Not based on what you did. You were made that way. You were made the righteousness of God in Christ. What does righteousness mean? It means right standing. Okay? Righteousness also means, you know, righteousness means standing in the presence of God without any sense of guilt. And then standing in the presence of devils and demons as master. Hallelujah. That's what righteousness means. You are accepted before God. Amen. You see, righteousness is not based on a feeling, remember? You don't feel righteousness. You just got to know righteousness because you were made righteousness. Amen. So that's part of the you that you must know. You are the righteousness of God. Ooh, glory to God. God sees you as his own. When you open your mouth to say, Father, I love you, it's like, oh, glory to God. That's, that's the voice of my child. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're the righteousness of God. He made you right. I said, he made you right. I said, he made you right. You didn't make yourself right. Bible said that our righteousness is as filthy rags. Somebody, somebody said, well, Reverend, if you preach that way, people will never change. No, if you know who you are, then you won't act like who you are not. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Yes. Can you say amen? Yes. So you're the righteousness of God. Yes. Amen. <laughs> you are in right standing with God. Yeah. Have you noticed that whenever a situation comes up, it matters what side you're on? <laughs> Well, you're on the right side because you're on God's side. Amen. Very important. So don't operate from the wrong standing. You are on the right standing. So don't operate from the wrong standing. So many people that God, through the blood of Jesus Christ, put on the right standing are operating on the wrong standing. Because they have failed to recognize, number one, that they are spirit beings. And that they've been born again. And that they are the righteousness of God. 
they have failed to recognize that, and as a result, they are operating from the wrong side. They are still begging God to do something that God did over 2,000 years ago. They are still be begging God to see them right when he already does. They are still begging God, Father, to understand when he already does. It means you are operating from the wrong standing. You are still begging God for what's yours when it's already yours. Have you ever been to a restaurant? This is one of my favorite ones. Have you ever been to a restaurant? You say, hey, um, I like um, uh, a glass of ice water. Mm -hmm. But please, be sure to get, be sure, be sure. I'm pleading with you. Waiter, waitress, please be sure it has wet with it. <laughs> huh? yeah. Did you get what I'm saying? I like a glass of water. Please be sure it has wet on it. Be sure it's wet. When you ask for water, do you have to pray for wet? Why? It comes with it. It comes with it. You can't get water without wet. You get water, you get wet. See, when you were made the righteousness of God, you were made to possess everything that the Father has. He, he, you are his own. And he sees you that way. He sees you that way. So you don't have to beg him. Oh, God, see me. He already sees you like that. I mean, can you imagine what that waitress or that waiter will do when you ask that? They, they probably walk back to the kitchen. Ooh, we got another one of them. <laughs> Amen. But that's what so many people are doing. They're seeing themselves outside of where God placed them. And because of that, struggle is continuing to abound. Remember, the foundation for victory is because of who he made you. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes. You were born an overcomer. And that will never change. Amen. You see, that's, that's, you see, everything you need, you're born with. Are you listening? Everything you need, you're born with. That's why the Bible instructs us to know ourselves after who God has made us and live from inside out. Live from the knowledge of who he's made you. Amen? Oh, praise God. Let's look at another thing that God says you are. This you that you have to know. You are an heir of God. Oh, come on, brother. Come on, sister. And joined heirs with Christ. That's why we were saying earlier, you don't beg for things that God has already made yours in Christ. You are no longer intimidated by wealth. That's why some people, you know, you see people, you know, they get some fancy car, they think it's all that. And then you get a religious person that says, well, God's not happy because you get... God's not offended by stuff. <laughs> he got it all. There's nothing on the earth that impresses God. <laughs> he created it all. So you might as well enjoy it. <laughs> you see? Because you are an heir of God, wealth doesn't intimidate you. You'd be like, oh, yeah, praise God. Yeah. Yeah. It's part of our thing. Amen. You are an heir of God. You are an heir. An heir means somebody left you an inheritance. An inheritance is not something you work for. Is it? It was bestowed. It was given. So, so when God says, you, you, when the Bible says you are an heir of God, that means God has made everything he has available to you. 
Jesus said that it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To give you the kingdom. Not the neighborhood, the whole kingdom. You see, this information, I call it, is stored in your hard drive called your spirit man. You see, the hard drive for the Christian is the spirit man. This is what many believers are doing. They go to the computer. You know, you will see a com you will have a computer and you have a monitor. You see, a monitor will have all those icons on it. But you know, if that monitor is not connected to a hard drive, you can click on those icons all day long and it will tell you what? Can access it. Can access it. Can access it. So this is what many Christians are doing. They leave the hard drive unconnected, which supplies the monitor. And they're looking to click the monitor. I'm not seeing it. Pastor, pray, pray, pray. I'm not seeing it. Click, 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 click. I don't see it, Pastor. Ah, oh, click, 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 click. I don't see it. But all those things are connected to the hard drive. So what we ought to say is, sister, brother, where's your hard drive? Is it connected? Is it connected? Because it matters. Connection matters. Are you hearing me? Connection matters. Have you ever tried to wonder why an appliance wasn't working? You're like, man, I've checked everything. I've checked everything. It's not coming on. And somebody had a novel idea. Check the connection. Don't need to come Oh, the thing wasn't even plugged in. Oh, man. You see, the life you're looking for, you were born with, is in your spirit. You just have to recognize yourself that way. Amen. Something else you need to know about who you are is that you are the redeemed. You are the redeemed. You are free from the bondages of sin. Amen. You are forever redeemed. Remember, Galatians 3. 13 and 14. He said, Christ hath, hath, means past tense. Past tense. Open your eyes, look at me. Hath means past tense. Past tense. Means it's done. Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. He has. Not going to. Oh, God, I'm believing you to redeem me. Oh, God, I'm believing you to redeem me. For God to agree with you in that prayer is to agree that what Jesus did was not enough. What people are doing is that they're looking at the natural circumstances and assume that they are not redeemed. So they're praying based on what the natural circumstances look like. Hmm? Instead of listening to the real them, the real you is not praying that prayer. The real you, the man on the inside is not praying, oh God, redeem me. No, he knows he's redeemed. The real you, the man on the inside is not going, oh God, I need money, I need money. He knows he was born into a wealthy family. He knows that everything he needs is in there. He just wants help from you training your thinking to connect with him. You see, all your life, your assignment is to train yourself to connect to, what in, to what's inside. But many people are connecting to what's outside, trying to flow it inside. It is only what's inside that changes what's outside. And the day we get that revelation, struggle is over. So when you face obstacles, you say, I'll be right back. Just a second. What are you doing? You're drawing from the resources that are inside to influence the outside. I've got rivers of life flowing out of me. They make the lame to walk and the blind to see. 
He opened prison's door, says the captives free. I've got rivers of life flowing, 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 flowing. So, did you see it? We sing it and we miss the whole thing. It's coming out from inside. Why? Because you were born with it. You were born with it. Have you ever read that scripture, Ephesians 1, 3? He said, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places in Christ. If any man be in Christ, <laughs> hallelujah. See, this is the key. You got to know who you are. Don't know yourself after the flesh. Oh, Glory to God. Something else you must know about this real you is you are an ambassador for Christ. You are an ambassador for Christ. That's how, that's how I operate in Nigeria. When I walk in, I see myself. I'm an ambassador. I'm God sent. I represent God. I am God's spokesman. And so are you. Amen. Praise God. You are God's contact on the earth. If you allow your spirit man to educate you, you will realize that what so many people are dying to become, you already are. People are dying to be important outside. I want you to recognize me. I'm this, I'm that. But you're God's spokesman. He wouldn't do anything on the earth without consulting you. The God Almighty, the creator of the universe, wouldn't do a thing without consulting you. That's a position. Wow. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. So you don't need to run around seeking for who will do something. You don't need to go doing this seeking for who will do something. You are an ambassador for Christ. You do something. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. You are anointed of God to do something. You see, whenever you discover this you that I'm talking about, you wake up every morning, I'm anointed to do something. That's how Jesus did what he did. Jesus did what he did on the earth as a man anointed of the Holy Spirit. And this is how he did it. He got up every morning. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me. Hallelujah to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, and so on. He started announcing to himself what he's anointed to do. May I remind you that when you made Jesus Lord, the Bible said that the spirit of him dwells inside of you. The anointing which you received of him abides in you. Glory to God. Amen. You are an ambassador. Amen. God's word will be as good in your mouth as it is in his. If you would dare to say it. <laughs> Remember, you were created in his image and in his likeness. His image means the way he is and likeness means the way he does things. How does he do things? He speaks it. And you are anointed to speak it and walk away knowing that it is so. <laughs> Jesus help us. Amen. 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 Are you seeing it? Amen. Something else that the, word, that the word of God calls you. He said you are the salt of the earth. Nobody likes me. I'm not accepted in this area. Lie, lie, lie. You're looking at the wrong picture. Yes. Bible says you're the one to make that area taste good. 
Have you ever been to a restaurant? Many of us will go to one later. Okay. And you see on the table, you see salt and pepper placed on it. Why do you think they put it there? It makes the food taste different, right? It gives taste to the food. Bible said, because you are born of God, your presence makes the earth taste good. They need you. The earth needs you. Don't listen to the news outside. Don't listen to people talking junk. They need you. They need you. They need you. The world needs you. Ah, oh, nobody pays attention to me. That's because you've been listening to them. Amen. You're doing the same thing that the ten spies did when they were sent to survey the promised land. They come back and they say, you know, here's some graves. The land is good, but there are giants in the land. And we were like, we were as grasshoppers to their side because that's how we saw ourselves. They give us the whole key. I love the word of God. It tells you everything. He said, because that's the way we saw ourselves. Now, they were spies. It, it wasn't like they went into the promised land and said, hey, we're spies from the land of Israel. We're here to take over your land. How do you see us? <laughs> they didn't do that. You see, it was all their imagination. They failed to see who they, have, who they are, where they weren't born again yet. But they have the promise because they had the word. Amen. You're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. You lead the world, not the world leading you. You set the standard, not the world setting the standard for you. If you listen to so many news broadcasts, you wouldn't do a thing. You think the world is coming to an end tonight. But it's not. Amen. Amen. If you listen to some news, people will tell you who's against you. But if God be for you, who can be against you? What are you? Why are you wasting your time trying to figure out who's against you and who's not? Ain't nobody got time for that. Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Talk back to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. After this meeting, many of you will leave and see marvelous changes because you will see yourself different. And you will demand something different. Amen. You see, there's a building set for this church. But God's got to get you in the view of what he has available. Because if you can't see the real you, you can't see what's contained in the real you. So it's important. That's why we're on this message. Sharing it with you so you can see. When a man sees who he's been made, he does extraordinary things. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> you are the light of the world. You lead the world and not the world leading you. Amen. You don't allow the world to lead you, nor their poles leading you. Are you listening to me? Somebody say, well, the poles said. The poles said. They say, you know, you know what's on the news? The poles said. A new creation? Bringing yourself down to a pole? Come on. That's you saying to the Lord Jesus, you know what? These people are mightier than what you did. And those spies who said the same never made it into the promised land. So how far do you want to go? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You see. <laughs> you, you are, Bible calls you more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. You know, more than a conqueror means you're not the one involved in the fight. Right, right, right. Somebody did the fight right. and made you more than conqueror because they provided you with the victory. Right. Yeah. A conqueror fought, 
But more than the conqueror received the product from the fight. Bible calls you more than a conqueror. You're not the one fighting. The fight has been fought and won. Fought and won, you are more than a conqueror. And, but if you don't know, the circumstances will draw you into a fight. Like a person told us a story a while back, you know, they, they were watching a fight that was fought already and recorded, you know. They didn't know it was already, it wasn't live. So there they were watching this boxing fight. It was between Evander Holyfield and somebody else back in the day. And she was there ruling for Evander Holyfield. Go, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Not realizing that that was just something that was already done. It's just showing what was happened or what had happened. So there she was sweating. Oh, oh God, let Evander win. win. Let Evander win. Let Evander win. She all doing all kinds of stuff, except for, Ed. you know how they do it, and they just flashed. Yeah, what a fight that was on that date. <laughs> so many things we're sweating for, fight, trying to fight for, has already been done and made available to us. Amen. Remember, the Bible says we were raised together with Christ and made to sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Far above all principality and power and dominion and might. Why are you afraid of them? You are seated above them. Somebody says, oh, did you hear that kind of sickness? I'm far above them. No cause for alarm. Did you hear? Did you hear? I'm far above them. No cause for alarm. Somebody said, you must be, you must be, you must be. I said, no, it's not you must be. I am. I am far above. Amen. What are people trying to do? They're trying to get you to see things based on how things look. They're trying to get your soul to call the shots for you. Amen. It's like trying to call somebody who serve you to come decide for you what's going to happen. Hmm? You're trying to call people that work for you. Hey, tell me what's going to happen. What's my future going to look like? Wait a minute. You work for me. You don't make that decision. I make that decision. You see, you are a spirit being. Your soul works for you. Your sight works for you. Your feelings work for you. They don't make the shots. Years ago, when I was learning this, I was just, you know, I was just believing God for something, praying. You know how we pray, and we just cry out, Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. I love Jesus. He's, God is good. You see, so, so many of us, we like God, but we don't like God when God starts telling us the truth. All of a sudden, we suspend our prayers. Oh, I'm hungry now, Lord. Oh, yeah. We know. So I was just praying, crying, booing, you know. I'm going through this. And I'm saying to the Lord, Lord, did you get me? Do you understand me? Do you hear me now? Did I cry enough to get your attention? You know how you cry, you cry, you say, God must be answering now. <laughs> and he came on and said, you know what he said to me? He said to me, son, if at the end of that crying, and it doesn't put you into faith to believe what I said, you have abused your emotions. <laughs> Needless to say that I dried up the tears quick. And said, okay. He said, now talk to me intelligently. Don't come to me. <laughs> Don't mock my works. You see, we mock God's works when we come to him any other way than the way he made us. Remember, God must not be mocked. Amen. 
You're more than conqueror. You are thoroughly equipped to come out of any difficulty. Thoroughly equipped. Greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. Greater is the rivers of life flowing out of you that, than the death that surrounds you. Greater is the power of God that surges out of you than the opposition that you will encounter. Hallelujah. You're more than conqueror. Amen. You have passed the level of questioning whether or not you will make it. You've passed it. People that are solely minded solely minded. Did you understand what I'm trying to say? People that are driven and controlled by their soul are still trying to find out whether they'll make it or not. But the new creation has already passed that. Because he's made it. He's made to see. He's made to see. You can't sit down until the work is done. You're made to see. Amen. You're made to see. You're seated in victory. You just have to let that victory from the inside flow out. Hallelujah. You always triumph. You don't win some, lose some. No. No, you always. After always, what's left? <laughs> Amen. You are no longer wowed by oppositions. You're no longer wowed by circumstances. Have you ever called up some Christians? You know, oh, this is going on. Like, wow. <laughs> The devil is doing this. Wow. <laughs> this, this will cause. Wow. Everything's wow. No, you've been delivered from wow. Your wow ought to be to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Wow is reserved for the almighty God. Father, when I think about what you did in my life. It wows me. <laughs> Amen. Instead of going around going, wow, wow, wow. No. The doctor said this, wow. The doctor said this, wow. Come on. You always triumph. No matter what the opposition is, you're still more than the conqueror. You see, circumstances shouldn't change your identity. You are who you are. You just need to act like who you are. I say this all the time and people laugh. I said, have you ever had a system where you didn't have enough money in your pocket? They said, yeah. Almost 99% said, yeah, man, yeah, I've been there. I've been there. I said, yeah. I said, did you go to the DOT, to the driver's license office, and said, I'm here to change my name? They probably will ask you, okay, did you get married? Did, did you? Did? You say, oh, no, I'm broke, so I need you to change my license to broke. <laughs> change my name to broke. That would be weird, wouldn't it? You see, experiences doesn't change your identity. You are who God said you are. If you will believe it, it will change your experience. Just like you will look at that man that did that as like, that's, that's foolish. But so many of us do the same. We, we begin to adapt conditions, information from the soul as if it's real. When the one on the inside is waiting. Calling for you. Recognize. Hello. 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 Hi. Doc. Hello. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Another part of you that I want you to recognize before I share the other things with you is that you are holy. You are holy. First Peter 2 verse 9 says you are a royal priesthood. A holy nation, peculiar. You are holy. Why? Because you were created in true holiness. God made you that way. He created you in his image. He's a spirit and he's holy. 
So you are holy. See yourself as holy and you will bring acts of holiness. The reason why people, believers, are not acting holy is because they have failed to see themselves as holy. Because you will only act like the you you see. If you see yourself as holy, according to the word of God, the you on the inside is holy. The you on the inside, the real you, is thrilled to obey God. The real you doesn't want to live in sin. The real you is all after God. You just have to let him come outside. Bible tells us, put on the Lord Jesus. Put him on. Put him on. He's inside. He, ab he abides in you. Put him on. But some people go outside and they borrow clothes to just make sure he doesn't get put on. Very important. So, you guys still have a few minutes? Oh, my word. I got to get to this part. Amen. And you'll see some miracles as we go. Amen. God has put in place graces and tools to help us function in this new identity. Isn't God good? He doesn't just make you something. He puts things in place to help you function as such. Isn't that wonderful? He's a good God. He's a God who completes us. Amen. Amen. One of the things that he put in place to help us function, to help us function in this new identity is called the mighty Holy Spirit who he sent to indwell us. Bible calls him our helper. Our help. Can you imagine? Yes, you can. Having the, God, the almighty God himself as your helper. People look down on helpers. But when you think about this helper on the inside, you never look down on a helper. But what is the job? Did you realize that a helper would only help you, not decide for you? Okay, this is where many people miss it. They say, God, you know, God, you know, you decide for me. No, he already told you according to his word who you are. That decision has been made. So you need to believe it and act like it's so. And this mighty Holy Spirit who is inside of you will energize you. Amen. Have you ever read the scripture? It said that you are strengthened with might. In your inner man. People are wanting to strengthen their body. How about, you, can, you, you, you can go to the grocery store, buy all kinds of groceries, and put it in front of your house and say, house, I want to bless you. Eat. You went to the store, went, went to Heidi, got all kinds of groceries, and you left them outside for your house. People be like, I didn't know it was that bad. We better be praying. But that's what many people do. Yes. Believers. Yes. They, get, they try to get everything to make their body look strong. Their house look strong uh -huh. at the expense of who they really are. F.F. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Boswell used to say, you know, seems like men will feed their body three hot meals a day and feed their spirit one cold snack a day. No wonder why some of us struggle. Amen. So the Holy Ghost is one of those things, one of the beings he put in place, God himself. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer is based on the fact that he is a new creation. You see, this is the thing. If you get the real help that will see you the way God sees you, it matters. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 in verse 16, it says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. So every help he would bring to you would always address you as a child of God. He will never look down at you. He'll never call you stupid. He'll never say, ah, you are no good anymore. No, 
He will witness with you as a child of God. And then he goes on to say, as an heir of God. He will never witness with you according to what you're going through. He will witness with you according to who you have been made. And if you will believe it and come out of that with that knowledge, you will walk through walls. Walk through things that many people fail in. That's one of the tools we have. The Holy Spirit. The mighty Holy Spirit. The one who raised Jesus from the dead. The same spirit. Bible said that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Wow. What, get a vision of that. The same giant that lifted Jesus from the dead is inside. Is inside. Is inside. Not outside trying to get in. He's inside looking for your expression. Amen. Another tool that God gave us, another tool that God gave us to help us function in who he's made us is his word. Paul said, I commend you unto God and to the word which is able to give you your inheritance. Ain't you glad he called it an inheritance? Which is able to deliver you your inheritance. Bible tells us too in Hebrews 4.12. He said, the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Dividing. The word is given to us to keep us from being fooled by the enemy. Because Satan walks through our soul. Yes. Right. He brings thoughts. Yep. He brings feelings and stuff. Thinking, you know, trying to get you to see yourself according to your feelings. Yeah. Trying to get you to see yourself according to what you see. The word of God is given to us to help us discern. Cut asunder. To recognize. Yeah. That's why, you, you know, things come. No, I am who God says I am. I'm the head and not the tail. I know this is happening right now, but this is who God says I am. I agree with God. I agree with God. Amen. God is looking for you to agree. Amen. Glory to God. Ah. Something else? I wish I could spend time. I can spend one, maybe three hours on this, just the word. But I wouldn't. So, so I can get to some other things. Another tool that God gave us to help us function in what it called us to do is he gave us a place in his body. He gave us a place in his body. Remember, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 18, he said, God has placed each member in the body. As it pleased him. He God. He God. He God. God has placed each member in the body as it pleased him. Wow. You see, that's called the local church. God placed you in a local church because it pleased him for you to be there. That's a place reserved for the new creation. I call the local church uh, the gathering of champions. The place where champions are fed. The place where champions get their food. You see, what you're getting this morning is called champion food. Amen. Amen. You eat it, you like, glory to God, I can do all things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You thought it was so bad till you came and you heard and you realized, glory to God, it's not over. For, for greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things. I can still win because the, I am born a winner. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's who I am. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. One of the tools that God gave us to function as such is the local church. So a believer who ignores or plays down at the role of the local church is playing down at their identity. See, remember, you can't choose for God what, what's good for you. 
He set it all in place. Remember? Righteousness, one based on what you did. He made you that way. So if you have to see what all he planned for you, you have to do it the way he put it in place. Amen. <laughs> Remember in Ephesians chapter 2, this is one of my favorite scriptures. Ephesians 2 in verse 10. Ephesians 2 verse 10 in Amplified Bible. I'll read it to you quick. Praise God. If I, if I could see it quick, 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 quick. Where are you? I can put it to you. I'm provided by, you know, it says, we are God's workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Born on you. We are God's own purchased. And he goes on to tell us that we may do the good works which God beforehand had planned or prearranged. Is that amplified yet? No. Or, you know, which God had beforehand ordained. Amplified Bible says, living the good life which he made and kept ready for us. Yeah. Living the good life. We were recreated to live a good life. Yeah. Do you know that part of the things that God prepared for you is the anointing on your pastors? That's part of the provision for the new creation. Is the office of the pastors. So a believer who ignores that and diminishes that will not function according to who God made them. Remember, in Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36, Jesus was ministering and he saw the multitude. Jesus said he saw them, they were fainting, they were scattered, and listen to what he said. He said, and they were as sheep, not having shepherd. He didn't say, ah, oh, the economy was bad. He didn't say they were born in the wrong neighborhood. He didn't say, oh, they didn't have jobs. He simply equated what they were dealing with, with not having a shepherd. Hmm? And we know that in Jeremiah chapter 23, in verse 4, God said, and I will set up shepherds over them, which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, says the Lord. Amen. See, these are tools that God put in for the believer to function. In who he's made them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Remember in Ephesians 4, 11, it says, after Jesus ascended, he gave gifts unto men. He gave some apostles, prophets, uh, uh, evangelists, uh, uh, pastors and teachers. And he goes on to say, for the perfecting of the saints, for the maturing of the saints. Do you know you can leave an inheritance for a child? Yeah. But if he never grows up, you can share it with them. As big and huge as that inheritance might be, if they never grow up, they are not in a position to understand it. Yeah. Bible tells us that God anoints pastors for our maturing, for our growing up, so that we can walk in all he's made available. You see, the problem is not, is it available? The problem is, are we recognizing it? But it demands spiritual maturity to recognize it. So many believers are looking for God who will solve their problems. But God is looking for his children that are willing to mature. Because if you mature, you realize that what you're asking him to solve, he's already solved. He's already provided. He made all that when he changed your identity. Amen. Very important. Very important. It's, it, that's why you don't play with your local church. You don't, you see, so many people think, oh, I come to church today. I, let me tell you, if it wasn't for my pastor, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have access to what I enjoy today. I wouldn't even dream about being in the mission field for the Lord. You have to understand when, when, what's important to a baby when they're born? Growing up. That's why they take him back to the doctor for checkups, right? When you go, they measure their head diameter. They check all the other stuff, make sure. What are they looking for? Development. Yeah. Development. 
You see, when I, after you were born, God delivered you to a spiritual parents called pastors. Designed to nurture you, to feed you with the word of God. To feed you with, with the word of God. Why? So that you can become what he already called you. It's only in the local church that you will come in and you hear truths of God's word. Hallelujah. Some people are dealing with diabetes here. If you have diabetes or have been dealt with diabetes or taking medications for diabetes, stand to your feet. Praise God. Diabetes. Thank you, Father. The anointing is here to minister. The anointing is here. The Spirit of God said to me, demonstrate to this congregation what you're talking about. And that's what we're doing. And as you will lift your hand up to him. And say father I thank you for that anointing. It sets the, the captives free. It destroys yoke. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Healing 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 in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Are you dealing with authorities too? In the name of Jesus, I say to that, go every joint gain momentum today. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, 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 Father. In the name of Jesus. Healed in the name. Healed in the name. Healed in the name. Thank you, Father. Healed in the name of Jesus. Now, who is that one with ulcers? Ulcers. Ulcers. Stomach ulcer. 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 Anybody? Yes, you? Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. All you have to do is just receive it. All, that, that's all. It's already there. It's, it's like going into the pantry right. and getting something that's there already. It belongs to you. It will never be separated from you. You're never far from it. It's in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How about lungs? Somebody's lungs. 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 Anybody? Lungs. Lungs. And you too? Praise God. All right. I come, I come lay hands on you. There's an endowment in our hands for search. In the name of Jesus, I speak to those lungs. Function like you're called to. Those sacks come back up. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lungs, lungs, lungs. Breathe in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's a demonstration to you of the benefits of being where God planted you. Because that's where he will have an anointing to address everything you need. Amen. That's where you're reminded that you are a champion. You're not a loser. You're not fighting a battle. You've already won. You are maintaining your victory. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 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 See, when you understand this, you wouldn't take the local church for granted. When you come, you'd be like, ready. God has anointed a man and a woman to impart into me what I need for my faith to work. You see, the Bible says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith, even our identity. Our faith is our identity, but our faith needs to grow. Yes. Amen. You will possess anything to the degree that you have knowledge of it. This is a house where your faith is to grow. So you walk in with that mindset coming. By Saturday, you're already preparing your heart, Father. I pray for my pastor right now. Give him utterance. I know you planted me here. And you say where I'm planted there I will flourish. So I'm asking right now. Give him, give her utterance for me. Whatever I need to hear to nurture me. To make my faith become explosive. I believe it right now. Amen. And you walk through those doors. You're going something good. It's going to happen to me today. Hallelujah. I'm going to hear from God today. Amen. 
That's what Paul said. Paul said that I long to see you. That I might impart to you spiritual gifts so that you are established. Established in what? In the truth. Established in who you have been made. You are not struggling to be made somebody. You already made somebody. We're talking about learning how to function in that somebodyhood, if we could say that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So many believers' problem is face problem. Face problem. So many people think, oh, I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with this, Pastor. I'm the, it's all face problem. Paul said, I long to see your face. Uh, let me read it to you. First Thessalonians 3, verse 10. This is Paul speaking to the church at Thessalonica. It says, night and day praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So if that which is lacking in your faith is perfected, <laughs> can you imagine? You can take possession of more. Amen? So church services are a place where Things that are lacking in your faith is perfected. What is it that will make a faith lack? Knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are caught up for lack of knowledge. So when that knowledge starts coming, you're like, ooh, I learn everything I'm doing today. Just being in church. Being in church. We, that's what we're telling people. A man in Nigeria heard us over the radio. This was a guy who has access to the government. He led, was special advisor to the president. Going through circumstances. Car stalled, stopped in the middle of the road. And he said he was led to do something he's never done before. He was, he's a believer. He turned on the radio. And he caught the last few minutes of a 15-minute program. The last few minutes of it. And it and the Spirit of God said to him, you, go to, you better go find that man. And he came. I was still here last February in a meeting. And he went. And my wife told me about it. And you know, he's been coming ever since. Amen. This is how, you, how I knew it had to be God. He went when my wife was, was ministering for five weeks. He just kept saying, that was good, Pastor. Oh, that was word in season for me. You see, whenever you are in your place, it doesn't matter who's preaching. You yeah. take in that word. Yeah. That's how you know you're real. Somebody say, am I real? How do you respond to the anointing? That tells you. You see, so many people's questions can be answered just straight like that. The level you respond to the anointing is the level of real you are. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because that same anointing that's in you is also ministering to you. So, so many people's problem is face problem. Some people, when they come, they frown their face. No wonder the Lord told Jeremiah, I said, don't look at their face. Right. <laughs> Amen. I said, this is a great time. Amen. It's a great time. I said, it's a great time. It's a great time. I said, it's a great time. Glory to God. 